Hello and welcome to the 37th episode of Fresh Off The Reel. My name is Lib. And my name is Pat Sandler. I'm running out of funny things for these. <laughs> and, and today uh, we're taking one of our recommendations that uh, were submitted to us through our link tree. Make sure that if you haven't sent us a recommendation and you have a movie uh, in your head that you want to recommend to us or a TV show, make sure to send us your recommendation. Linktr.ee slash fresh off the reel. First link on the link tree. But we are uh, taking a recommendation from our good friend Natasha uh, uh, Kikioke on Twitch. Uh, she recommended us Click by Frank Cor- Coracci. I think that's how you say it, but that, that's, that's, it's an Adam Sandler movie. Yep. If you've seen one of these, you've seen all of them, except Uncut Gems. That one's special. <laughs> yeah, but, and Jack uh, and Jill is also very special. <laughs> sure. Yeah, we uh, we this is another movie we watched uh, together. Yeah. Yeah, we we watched it all together in the same room. Yeah, that's true. We were in the same room for that. That was that was a fun time. It uh, sure sure. This movie is alright. I enjoy it. Like it's it's not good, but I enjoy it. <laughs> I didn't enjoy it. I thought it was dumb and stupid, and that's going to be a theme for both movies we talk about today. It's dumb and stupid. It's an Adam Sandler movie. If it's not dumb and stupid, what's the point? Never forget that this man was like, if Uncut Gems doesn't win an Oscar, I'm making the most intentionally shitty movie possible. And then he made Hubie Halloween. Did he make it? He stars in it. He's he's like, when I say make, I mean he's in it. Okay, okay. I don't think it's as bad as this, though. Hubie Halloween? No, I'd, rather try, I'd much rather watch this. I don't know, man. The hustle was pretty good. Because, <laughs> like, this this is this is Adam Sandler being Adam Sandler, right? Okay, yeah. So. Hubie Halloween is him trying to be Adam Sandler. Like, on purpose. <laughs> ah, I see, I see, okay. I, I still think that the, the only, the only movie where Adam Sandler was actually funny was Happy Gilmore. Yeah, Happy Gilmore, Happy Gilmore is funny. I think that's the on- the only Adam Sandler movie that's actually funny. It, I don't know if it, uh, Hotel Transylvania, I guess too, but like that's a VO. That's not the same. Yeah, I mean he does a good job in those movies, but again, like it's it's a lot of visual humor that's there because if it's animated, right? It's not like him. Yeah, but he gives a good performance in those movies. So, a- anyways, uh, let's let's talk cinema. I, yeah, I, let's, I guess. let's talk. Let's talk cinema. I I think like. Adam Sandler is an interesting actor to talk about, like in every anything he's in, because I think like he can be genuinely like funny when he wants to be. Like his old SNL stuff is great. Oh yeah, like like uh, the, when you think Adam Sandler SNL, the first thing that should come to your mind is the Hanukkah song. <laughs> I remember growing up and watching uh, SNL best hits on Netflix when Netflix was brand new and it actually had movies that you could watch Ooh, hit on netflix it was full of funny adam sandler shit and like even jim carrey uh there was funny jim carrey shit on 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 adam sandler on snl too like snl is just like it's the comedy hub you know (laughs) but then then you you isolate adam sandler when you isolate adam sandler his acting is fine but then you, you you if you Put him in his movies, then it. Be, I don't know which movie started it. I guess what what was what was the first stupid Adam Sandler movie? It's easy to find. Release date earliest first. Coneheads. <laughs> I guess they all started in Coneheads. I don't. I, the thing is, like, I don't think he's done. Like, like when he's doing comedy, he's great. But once he started doing movies, he just doesn't give a shit. Like, I, I, I don't think he ever gave a shit. Like, ever. Ever? It's like, you know, he, he started doing movies, and then he just, like, he typecasted himself as the, like, dumb dad character, and he just never tried. Yeah. Um, except for Uncut Gems. Because here's the thing, right, is I watched Uncut Gems, and then he proved to everybody that he can act. Like, he could do a damn good job when he wants to, and he just never wants to. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's if it's his agent, who, like, just keeps getting him shitty movies... Or, like, he only agrees to do, like, things for a quick buck. I don't know what it is. But for some fucking reason, this man who can act and can be funny chooses not to at every given opportunity. There's only, like, two or three movies where he actually tries. One of, one yeah. of, those, uh, one of those being 
Huey Halloween, but by actually tries in that movie, it's yeah, actually it's, it's tries, tries to be, to be stupid. bad. Like I, I think you, there's definitely things you can enjoy about Adam Sandler movies. I enjoy Click as like a uh, like it's not good, but I enjoy it, right? And like I like the first Grown Ups enough. I think it's I think it's bad, but it's 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 funny to watch. You laugh at it though, not with it. I mean the the thing about Grown Ups is that he's he's with four other comedians who are also not funny in that movie, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> but this isn't about <laughs> Grown Ups. But like, here's okay. Here's the thing with Adam Sandler in general is he just makes movies with his friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, exactly. yeah, you know, Ke- you know, Kevin James, Rob Schneider. Let's go make a movie, okay? <laughs> like, I don't get it. Like, he he gets movies with funny people, and then they they come together, and he and then they're they're all not funny together. Like fucking Chris Rock's in in Grown Ups, he's not funny. Fucking like Tim Meadows is in Grown Ups, not funny. <laughs> David Spade. Not, not funny. funny. Kevin James. I mean, he, okay. Kevin James is is very often not funny, mind you. But like, <laughs> this there's a show with Kevin James. It's called I think The King of Queens. It's actually a good show. I like I like that show. I have not seen it. It's okay. It, it's fine. It's just, it's just because uh, the supporting cast in that show is really good. Kevin James himself, like by himself, is not good. But he plays like a cop, and he's like the worst cop ever, and it's really funny. <laughs> Sha- Shaquille O'Neal's in Grown Ups. <laughs> he's an officer. <laughs> what? Okay. Anyway, this is this is not the movie we're talking about. Yeah, today we're talking about Click, uh, a 2006 film directed by Frank Coracci that I said like uh, that I said before. Uh, he also directed Zookeeper and The Wedding Singer, which are. <laughs> which is our Kevin James, a uh, Kevin James movie, and another Adam Sam movie, Adam Sandler movie, respectively. So it's like, I'm just surprised that <laughs> Kevin James isn't, isn't in Click. Me too. I'm surprised. Maybe he was doing something else at the time. Hold on. Let's see. Let, what was Kevin James doing in 2006? Monster House. He was doing Monster House. <laughs> it's like Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider's in it. Yeah, Kevin James. Like that's it. That, that's the trio. They're best friends. Kevin James, Rob Schneider, and Adam Sandler, the trio. I remember when I was a kid, I would always get Jim Carrey and Adam Sandler confused. Uh, I still do sometimes. I get a lot of people confused because of yeah. <laughs> like similarities. Yeah, yeah. You get Jim Carrey and and Adam Sandler mixed up sometimes. Yeah, uh, I, lo- really? I lost a I lost a quiz game a long time ago because I thought Adam Sandler was in the mask. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I see. It's it's uh it's sad when it happens. I mean, like I look, I I mix up a lot of people. I mix I mix up uh Melissa McCarthy and um Amy Schumer a lot. Uh, that that happens that happens the most I think. Out of, out of all of my mix ups, that that's the one that happens the most. Melissa McCarthy and Amy Schumer. Second most is uh this is the one everybody hates me for is uh Beyonce and Rihanna. Yeah, I hate that one because like I, Amy Schumer and and um, fuck, what's her name? Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> Melissa McCarthy, I can kind of get because like aside from like one just being like strictly more vulgar than the other, their comedy style is very different. They both kind of do very similar similar things in in both their acting and their their like comedy. So I can kind of get it. I don't get Rihanna and Beyonce. They're two completely different people. They sound completely different. I don't get it. It's no no no. They do sound different and they look different. It's. If I hear a Rihanna song, there's a 50-50 chance I'll say it's a Beyonce song. Okay. That that's that's what like like I'll hear Umbrella and I'm like, oh that's that's Beyonce. Interesting. And and then wait, Beyonce is wait, is Umbrella be- actually Beyonce or am I wrong about that? No, you're right. You're okay. right. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's, it's it's Rihanna. Okay. <laughs> It'd be funny if I had it messed up right then. <laughs> you're 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 good, you're good. Yeah, but anyways, uh, let's let's read the plot synopsis here for Click. So, uh, what if you this is from Letterbox? What if you had a remote that controlled your universe? A harried workaholic, Michael Newman, doesn't care, ha- doesn't have time for his wife and his children. Not if he's to impress his. Oh, okay, ungrateful boss, and <laughs> I, I'm bad at reading, and learn a well-deserved promotion. So when he meets Morty, Christopher Walken, yeah, Christopher fucking Walken is in this movie. A loopy sales clerk, 
he gets to he gets the answer to his prayers a magical remote that allows him to bypass life's little distractions with increasingly historical results his hysterical results excuse me this movie is quite historical though <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. It made history of having the the stupidest concept ever, but also being like one of the first movies to do the time stop thing. <laughs> yeah, kinda. This is yeah. This is probably the first movie that did like the slow mo. It, it doesn't do it the same way like X Men does it later and shit, but it's probably the first one to to try it. This is also like I'm pretty sure this is Adam Sandler's most famous movie. Yeah, I think I think so. It's, between, it, it's definitely I, I, I like think, no, no. Grown Ups is probably his most famous, but I I don't know. I feel like more people know Click than I mean, like they're both really big movies, but I feel like Click is more widely known. Maybe that's just because I see I see more Click memes than I see Grown Ups memes. You know, I don't see memes for either. I I don't even I see I see a lot of Click memes, guys. I'm cool. <laughs> fun fun fact. Yeah, so in the Grown Ups in, in in the trailer for Grown Ups. Um, the, the the old the men are talking about getting drunk because their dad's on vacation, right? What else are they gonna do? And then the little girl in the movie is like, "I'm gonna get chocolate wasted." And when I was like, what, however old I was when this movie came out, I thought that was the funniest fucking thing ever, and I used to say that everywhere. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. So I was in. So Grown Ups came out in 2010. We're not talking about Grown. Okay. We're we're probably gonna talk about other Adam Sandler movies here because I guess this is a good opportunity to do that. Because Click is a there's not a lot to say about Click. It's a stupid Adam Sandler movie. They're all stupid Adam Sandler <laughs> movies. Uh, but well, first of all, okay. Before we get off on a tangent, what was your star rating for this? Uh, my review, my star rating for Click was a two out of five. I gave it a one out of five. I I think it it is. As far as stupid Adam Sandler comedies go, there are definitely worse ones. I'd rather watch this over something like Jack and Jill. And, okay, but ja- um, I'd, I'd watch I'd watch anything over Jack and Jill. No, I'd rather watch anything. I'd rather watch this again over like like just go with it and murder mystery that that like duology of movies he did with Jennifer Aniston for some <laughs> reason. Um, not that those movies are bad, but I just don't really like them. I'd rather watch this over like Pixels. Which I forgot he was in. I'm looking at his his films. I forgot he was in Pixels. Yeah, yeah. B- yeah. Billy Madison's actually another. We, we we were talking. I don't remember if this, we said this during the recording or if it was before. It actually might have been during the recording. <laughs> so nice, Pat. Good job. But uh, Billy Madison's not a bad. Um... Yeah, I, I I actually I've I've only seen Billy Madison once. I was really young, but I I, I thought it was really funny. Like, and it's actually one of his earliest movies. Like, look how young he is in the picture. You see that? Look how look how baby he is. Yeah. I think that's one of his like better movies. It's it's not bad. Don't mess with the Zohan is pretty is pretty funny. Oh yeah, that that's a pretty funny one. It's not good, but it's funny, right? <laughs> like, um, it's yeah, stupid they, funny. Yeah, I don't Sandler treads that line, man. He does a lot of like this is really stupid but funny. He did Eight Crazy Nights. Oh, that's a, oh my god. That's, that's a film. Oh my god, I forgot about no that it, that one's worse than Jack and Joe. That's worse than Jack and Joe. <laughs> no, I think I'd rather I think I'd rather watch it Crazy Nights. No, 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 no. fuck it, Crazy Nights. That movie. It, Crazy Nights garbage. is garbage. It's garbage. Don't get me wrong. That's but that I think I'd... fucking garbage. Okay, look, I I'm just really I just because I'm very critical with animation movies. I love animation, and I I I I, I hate when people consider animation a genre. I really hate when people say that. So like I'm I'm I gatekeep animation and A Crazy Nights is the worst fucking animated movie I have ever seen in my life. Oh, it's it's probably the worst animated movie I've seen too. But like it, it <laughs> but like it's not. There's it's... she technical <laughs> foul. <laughs> I'd rather watch it over. Like Jack and Jill is not bad. Like I I would love to do like an episode on, on Jack and Jill one day, or, or like a a live like. We just do it live while we're watching the movie. I think that'd be a funny movie to do it with. Just to yeah. watch us like, lose our fucking mind. Um, but yeah, Jack and Jill's awful. Um, although Transylvania is good, I stand by that. I think the first one's good. Yeah, like like uh the, like uh well, not including movies like uh, uh Uncut Gems, Hustle, and Punch Drunk Love because those are like his serious movies. Yeah, Punch Punch uh, Punch Drunk Love is great. Like. Like not including those, like the 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 Adam Sandler movies, the quintessential Adam Sandler movies. I think Happy Gilmore is probably the best one. I think it's really funny. It's my favorite sports movie. <laughs> if that if that helps. <laughs> I think I think golf. 
Fifty First Dates is Fifty First Dates is like not a bad dumb Adam Sandler movie. I think it's it's definitely a dumb Adam Sandler, but it's probably one of his better ones. I did. I I haven't seen Fifty First. I'll add to my wish watch list. Uh, I haven't seen Fifty First Dates, but I I know that uh, recently it's made a, a resurgence because people think it's offensive now. Yeah, no, it is. <laughs> it's like uh, because a couple of years ago there was a resurgence for what's that Bill Murray movie? Um, Lost in Translation. Because everybody's everybody's saying how racist that movie is, uh, but I I like, I consider it a five star movie. I think it's amazing. Like I I love that movie. You could think a movie's good, but also like understand that it, it is hasn't racist. Exactly yeah, basically, right? But you you also have to kind of look at these movies as products of their time. Like you you can't enforce twenty twenty two political views or twenty twenty two like morality onto movies that came out in two thousand six. Yeah, it's like it's like a. Again, but using animation as a as a as an example, the first animated feature film ever made was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So if you if you watch Snow White and you like judge it and like like you you put it up against I don't know what's the what's a later two D Disney film uh the, the Princess and the Frog that was the last one they ever made I think so like if if you put if you compare those two that's not fair. And then, like, and if you compare it, like, if, if you review it using today's standards, it's not fair at all. It's it's a five star movie, but for its time, nowadays yeah. the movie you might say the movie's too short. You might say the acting is not good. Uh, you might say that it has like outdated, um, like uh, outdated character traits, like how she needs her her uh, prince charming to to resurrect her you know so yeah like, like m- m- movies don't always age gracefully i also think movies of like like comedy movies of this style in like 2000 in like the mid 2000s like it was just a, it was offensive jokes or shit jokes like actually like poop like not not bad i mean like poop, poop, poop jokes. jokes yeah poop jokes and fartings or farting or like offensive humor that, that was just like the trend back then and regardless of what you think now and that's not to say we should like allow people to to make these jokes now, right? But like, if if yeah, you have to understand that that's just the nature of these movies back then, and and maybe we shouldn't enforce modern day standards onto them, at least in that regard. If a movie if a movie is bad, like if the joke is bad, yeah, it's 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 bad regardless, right? But like, it's not uh, it's a product of its time. On that note, a uh, click. It has a lot of a lot of a sexual lot. harassment jokes in it. Yeah, a lot of them. A lot of sexual harassment jokes and and a very racist character played by yeah. Rob Schneider. <laughs> yeah, and then another um, very sexist and racist character played by David Hasselhoff. <laughs> and and like those jokes have aged poorly. We're acknowledging acknowledging the fact that they aged poorly. Um, they're not good jokes, but they're very they're very standard of what kind of jokes were in these movies in two thousand six. Oh my! Especially an Adam Sandler movie. I don't think there's a single Adam Sandler movie from this era or like the twenty tens that didn't have some kind of joke against women or or or, uh, or race. It, it just it sucks, but it kind of was the trend. Dude, dude, I had no. David Hasselhoff is in Sharknado three. We have to watch it now. <laughs> He's probably in it as like a reference to Baywatch, right? We have to fucking watch it. Yeah, probably. Well, we gotta continue bad movie nights. We haven't done one in a while. Yeah, we haven't done that in a really long time. We we have to we have to go back to that. <laughs> we also have to finish the boys and house and, and and Daredevil and yeah, and then and we have to. Did you you have to finish uh, uh, Shameless? I finished Shameless. Oh, you finished know. Shameless. Okay. Yeah. Good. Speaking speaking of Shameless. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah! This fun, fun fact: While we were watching Click, that movie we're actually here to talk about. <laughs> um, I, I there's there's a, there's this kid in the movie, like the um, Adam Sandler's neighbor's kid, who I kept like eyeing because like he looked really really familiar. And then like halfway through the movie, I'm like, wait, that looks like uh, Cameron Monaghan. Like is that because I've been watching Shameless recently? At the beginning of Shameless, uh, he's young, right? Not as young as he is in this movie, but he's he's a kid. Yeah. I'm like, oh, is that Cameron Cameron Monaghan? And then I'm like, no, I can't be. And then my friends are like, no, that's him. Then we started taking a closer look, and we're like, he kind of looks like Cal Kestis from from Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Well, guess what? It is Cal Kestis from yeah, Jedi. It is, it is, <laughs> Cameron it is Monaghan Kestis. plays him. He's he's the mocap uh, and and the actor for him. 
Yeah. Also, <laughs> Rachel Rachel Dratch is in this, um, which is funny because she's also in Shameless. For some reason, this movie has such a like A plus cast. Like you got Christopher Walken is in it. Uh, there's the the one she's an aviator. Uh, Kate Beckinsale. Yeah, that's her name. She's in she's in the Underworld movies. That's where I know her from. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah. Like there's there's just so many like people that we just recognize we're like holy crap isn't this na -na -na from na -na -na? the whole time we were watching this movie <laughs> there's a lot of people from uh, from snl on this there's there's um uh what's her name uh julie julie kabner marge marge simpson yeah, yeah. Uh, marge simpson <laughs> is in this like, movie <laughs> th this movie actually has like a, a, a pretty funny cast there's a bunch of snl stars in it it's it's, it's good but like the, the, they they got cursed with being an Adam Sandler movie where it's just, it's not funny. <laughs> this movie isn't funny. They they make there, there's this character in the movie. Um, I can't remember her name, but she she's like um she's fucking David David Hasselhoff's like love interest and like she's she's Katie Beckinsale's best friend. I can't remember the actress's name. Debbie Downer. No 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 not De <laughs> no no not not Debbie Downer. Oh yeah, but Debbie Downer is in this movie. Debbie SNL. yeah yeah. That yeah, yeah, um, G uh, Rachel, da Rachel Dratch, she's in this. That's it, Rachel Dratch. Anyway, Dredge. this, I, I don't remember who who the actress is, I don't feel like looking it up. <laughs> but, uh, every joke about this woman is made at her expense, and it's about how she's, she's like a whore. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, like, every time she's on the screen, they make the exact same joke. It's not funny. One part of this movie has a narrator, and the narrator is James Earl Jones. <laughs> is such a weird choice you know darth vader <laughs> it's a weird choice for a narrator who's like oh he only narrates like a very specific part of the movie <laughs> fucking jonah hills in this movie like before he he really took off again he's barely in it he's only in it for like for, like one scene because they have to make a fat joke it's it's an adam sandler movie yeah it's because uh, jonah hill plays adam sandler's son when like like, he's a teenager he, when he's a teenager and he's kind of fat so there you and then go he's replaced, he's replaced again by by someone else uh jake hoffman animal. is also in this movie he's in the wolf of wall street and the irishman and rain man <laughs> like what a weird cast oh it's jennifer coolidge that's the that's the actress i'm thinking about <laughs> all right there you go there you go there you go oh yeah yeah okay now that i see her like th this movie has a really good cast, but they're given this this script that's just awful. And then Adam Sandler, whenever Adam Sandler walks on set with other human beings, he absorbs air all the talent out of them. He sucks them dry. Oh, yeah, Terry <laughs> Terry Crews is in this too. Yeah, he, he's in he's in one scene to make a to make a reference to white chicks, basically, and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> the entire joke is that oh Terry Crews was in White Chicks. Did That's you not joke. see White Chicks because you're a child watching this movie in 2006? I guess this joke is lost on you. Such a weird movie. Okay, well, so, okay, so in the movie, uh, Adam Sandler, he gets a remote that he could basically manipulate time with. So he could, like, skip forward. He can't go backward. Yeah, but he he could he could rewind. He can he can fast. For, he can't rewind. But he can fast forward. Yeah, it just he said can, he can't go back. Yeah, he can he can rewind in a sense that he could relive like past memories in real time. Yeah, but he can't he can't interact with the past. He he could fast forward. He could pause. He could slow down. He becomes the most powerful character in the multiverse. Goku fodder. One Punch Man trash. Adam Sandler in this movie god tier. Protagonist. Yeah, what's his he, what's his name? Michael Newman, God tier. <laughs> the the strongest character in fiction. Actually, the strongest character in fiction is Morty because he he made the the. Uh, remote. True, true, true. Mor Morty is a thing. Yeah, his name's Morty, not from Rick and Morty, but Morty. But, but he but he is but he but he is Christopher Walken. And the way the remote works is also just like really stupid. We're gonna we'll get to it when we get there. But like the emotional crux of this movie. It is based around this remote having a really stupid feature that shouldn't exist. I mean, let's just get to it. Let's just talk about it right now, because, like, what happens was, uh, so the, the remote has an internal memory, whatever, feature. It's a feature, air quotations. Yeah, not a bug, a feature. So, let's say he wants to skip work. So he fast-forwards through work. Now, every time he goes to work, it'll fast-forward. 
Yeah, it's like w- w- one time earlier in the movie, uh, so that they could make a joke about him finishing too quickly, he accidentally like fast forwards through sex, but like it was on- it was an accident. It wasn't on purpose. Yeah. So now every time he has sex, it fast forwards. Yeah, and, and, and trust me, that joke is made like five times. Yeah, and it's not funny. It's not funny ever. <laughs> but yeah, it's like the remote like learns basically. The biggest emotional crutch for the character in this movie. Which, for, first of all, only happens, like, two-thirds of the way in. Like, for most of the movie, there's no lesson to be learned, and he's just fucking around. And then, like, when there's 30 minutes left of the movie, the, the like, the big idea comes in. So, earlier in the movie, his boss was like, oh, if you do this, you'll get a promotion. So he just fast-forwards to when he gets the promotion. So now every time he's in line for a promotion, which is basically always he'll get he'll basically uh fast forward to when he gets that promotion so he fast forwards like years of his life at a time yeah and like what happened is because he like he fast forwarded three years of his life the remote's like i'm gonna remember this and he just fast forwarded through like everything like he like he 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 like gets really fat and depressed and they make a bunch of fat jokes and he wears a fat suit and it looks terrible it looks terrible. Then and then he he the remote like oh yeah we gotta fast forward now. And then he wakes up and he comes out of a coma. And it's been like twenty years. And then it happens again. And his kid's getting married. And it skips another like ten years because he always wants to skip over arguments with his wife. And it just happens that every time he's in the same room with his wife because that's a cliche from movies at this time. The <laughs> wife is a nag, you guys. You gotta argue with her at every given moment, and he always argue. But the remote skips all the arguments, so he just like keeps getting older and older and is dying. <laughs> Basically, is what happens. Yeah. Oh, and, oh, oh, and then the we didn't even talk about the the best joke in the movie. The 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 way he gets the remote, he goes to Bed Bath and Beyond. He goes to the bed section, goes to the bath section, and there's a section in the back, the Beyond, Beyond section. section. That's where he finds Christopher Walken. <laughs> there, like there he is, Christopher Walken. It's like oh shit! It's... He just has this remote. <laughs> So apparently he's like the Antichrist. <laughs> Isn't he the devil? Is that what he says? Or he's yeah. like he's death, right? He's death. Yeah, he's death. Yeah, he he's he's death from Family Guy. <laughs> That's the big twist, which I don't really understand because of he's he's death, but he gives the remotes like he they does he just give the Adam Sandler the remote just to play games? Like I don't get it. Yeah, and also he gives Adam Sandler a second chance after. So why? If he's actually death, why didn't he just let him die? Because he learned his lesson, Lib. <laughs> he learned that he should be he should be happy with the time he has to spend with his family. Great That's lesson. That's what the movie is about. He keeps skipping over his entire life because he, he only cares about himself. He only cares about himself and his career with the intention of providing for his family. But in the process, he abandons them. He, he leaves them behind. But he learns his lesson. What a what a wholesome wholesome adventure. Yeah, because the ending of this of this movie, uh, is the cli- the the most hated cliche in all of media. It was all a dream. Yeah, they they Super Mario Brother to us to us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they did it. They did it, guys. It was all a dream. But or or was it? Because he gets a letter from from Morty. Ooh. Yeah, he's he's given the remote again and then he throws it in the garbage right in the trash can which by the way as per the movie rules uh, a sequel is still on the table because the remote wasn't destroyed his, his kid finds the remote and uh and does the same thing yeah 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 so click is just the fucking worst and like the the whole the whole time we were we were watching it i i couldn't i couldn't stop uh I I could I couldn't stop pointing out all the shitty sh- shit, just straight up shit that's in this movie. There's one scene where he pauses his uh his 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 b- boss and it just does a really big like, fart like, in his yeah, face. Like, he fr- like he like shits his pants basically on his face and he, and he slaps the shit out of him. I mean, no no fr- first he first he pauses, he see like beats the shit out of him. Like it's like max power slapping. Then he unpauses so the guy feels pain. Then he repauses and like takes a shit on his face basically. 
<laughs> and then it pauses so you see that reaction. And it's like, it's, I, it goes on for so long. Like, he, he sits there farting in this man's face. Like a good like, minute. Yeah, for like a good minute. It goes on for so long. But that's like a thing with Adam Sandler movies in general. He, he doesn't, like, I don't think that fart jokes are inherently not funny, right? They're, they're lowbrow humor. You probably shouldn't laugh at them, but they can be funny in like certain situations, right? But every fucking time these movies make a shit joke or a fart joke, they go on for too long. And I think it's people think that's the joke, but no, like it's not funny. This man takes a shit on a guy for a minute, and it's you're, you're just <laughs> you're just sitting there, <laughs> and like he pauses. I'm just like, oh yeah, oh I, I, I got another fart. I'm doing it again. Oh. Like it's it's so bad. Like it's I, not. <laughs> this movie came out is is in theaters. Imagine sitting in a movie theater with your family because it was advertised as a family film. I'm sure kids kids ate that sh- shit up. Oh no. Kids in 2006. Uh, if uh, if you were a kid in 2006 and you watched this movie, please contact us. I want to know what what happened in, in that scene. And in I was your a head. kid. In- I was a kid in 2006. Yeah, so, I don't remember so, watching it. So was it. I. <laughs> so was I, but I didn't watch it in 2006. <laughs> I didn't watch it in theaters. If there was anybody out there who's listening to this that has seen this in theaters, please DM us on Twitter. We 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 want to know <laughs> what happened. <laughs> did you did you <laughs> metaphorically eat that shit up? <laughs> But like, but like, and it's not even just the fart joke. It's like every joke in the movie. Like, like there's there's one part where Adam Sandler is like driving, and and it's it's like one of the most famous like memes of the movie. It's like there's there's like a woman running in the opposite direction, and she has like big boobs. Oh yeah. And so he slows it down so you can just like sit there and gawk at her boobs jiggling basically, and it goes on for like thirty seconds. Like we get it. You're 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 a pervert. <laughs> Move on. And then on, on top of this isn't even Click's fault anymore because that. <laughs> Now this is because on Letterbox, I'll put it up on the screen. I get on Letterbox, the freaking still image that they show for the movie is like a sexy picture of the, of the the female lead. What's her name? The 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 one that was in Aviator. Katie Beckinsale. Yeah, Kate Beckinsale. You seeing this oh, picture? Kate. Yeah, I see it. What the fuck is this movie? Who is it for? Who is this movie for? Because it's it. It's not for families. <laughs> no, like, it, 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 but it's it's just it's lowbrow humor, right? Like, it's just that that's the kind of shit that was funny back then, I guess. But like, it, it was it though. <laughs> was like, it really funny? Like, uh, let's let's see. Uh, let me let's see what movies came out in two thousand six. Here's what you here's what you could have been watching here. Okay, Let, let's see comedy two thousand six. What what could have you been watching? Oh, there's not a lot of comedy. You could have been watching Casino Royale. It's not uh, a comedy. No, but it's 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 there. <laughs> you could, Borat came out the same year. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the, I mean, Borat's not similar. Like they have similar jokes, I guess. But Borat's actually funny. Here, what what? Here we go. Uh, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, Cars. Yes, that Pirates of the Caribbean is a comedy. Yes, it is. No, 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 I don't know about that. Uh, Night at the Museum. Uh, there's not a lot of comedies here. <laughs> 2006 wasn't the the year of comedies. Uh, I guess. I guess you. I guess you're watching Adam Sandler movies. Yeah, I guess. I guess you're watching uh Little Miss Sunshine, which is the highest rated film of 2006. Good movie. I haven't seen it. <laughs> the Silent Hill movie came out. That's just funny because it's that bad. <laughs> it, it's just so weird. Like like every Adam Sandler movie is like this, where like they, they always extend jokes. Like, they, they beat jokes into the ground. Adam Sandler movies are not capable of just making a joke and then moving on. It's always like, okay, we made a joke. We made a fart joke. Cool. Let's add, like, four more farts. Let's extend it by four more farts. Maybe by the fifth fart, it will be funny, right? So, like, even in situations where, like, the first fart is funny. Or, like, like for example, like, we'll talk about the scene where, where he pauses on his on his boss again. Adam Sandler, like, cause in, that, in that scene, he's the nine of promotion. That he that he told his family he was already receiving and he spent a bunch of money and he shouldn't have blah 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 right, so he, he pauses on his his boss and he and he slaps the shit out of him right, that's funny, that is a joke right, but then him pausing again to fart on him is the same joke it's just a different action but like the punchline is the same you're just adding farts 
But then they go a step further, and it's a minute of farting. It's just, it, like the joke already was like cool. Let's move on, and then it's extended and then extended again, and just but he does this every time, and he does it in every time in this movie and then every time in every other movie. All his all his stupid comedies are the same. Go watch Uncut Gems. Yeah, seriously, go watch Uncut Gems. Watch Hustle. Watch Punt Drunk Love. I need to watch Hustle. I haven't seen it. Yet. I haven't seen it either, but I hear it's good. <laughs> I heard it's good. I heard it's good. Yeah, but um, I I don't know what it is with Adam Sandler, but like, I, he has to know, right? <laughs> like the fact that he said what he said about Uncut Gems means he has to know that this is what his career is known for. Why does he d- let it happen? He he's a big name. I'm sure he could argue a script change. Yeah, he just doesn't care anymore. Who directed Uncut Gems? Maybe he never cared to begin with. Oh, the guy who directed Good Time. Directed on Cut Gems. That's that movie I like. Yes, yeah, that movie. It's, it's, I like. it's a it's a good time. I need to watch that movie. <laughs> you should. It's good. That, that's the movie that sold me on um, Robert Pattinson as an actor. Ah. I'm like, yeah, this guy's good. And then I watched like The Lighthouse and then The Batman, which you could hear about in our episode of The Batman. Yep. Um, uh, for me, it was The Lighthouse <laughs> that did these guys. Yeah, he's, he's great. Good time is. I, I think Steph at uh, Tudman. Is the one who doesn't like Good Time, I think. I think. Oh, you, Persona Five notification. <laughs> uh, I I apologize. <laughs> I've been playing that game, guys. I get it now. <laughs> I had I had homework to do today, and instead I played Persona Four for like four hours. <laughs> yeah, and I and I was playing Skyrim at like six a.m. <laughs> you were you were you were up early today. I wa- I fell asleep at like because uh, I stayed up the night the. I stayed up, uh, not last night, but the night before, uh, cause I, I had a, I had a dentist appointment at, at 9.50 and I, and, and it was like 3 AM and I didn't think if I fell asleep, I would wake up in time. So I just stayed up and I almost fell asleep on the dentist chair. And then when I got, I got home at like, at like 10, I ate and then, and then I played a little bit of game. It became two, two, I think it was two thirty two thirty PM. Crashed on my bed, woke up at like three in the morning, and like I'm not gonna end up going back to sleep. I just slept for like over twelve hours, so I just I just stayed up watching. I watched I rewatched uh, a bit of season two of Brooklyn Nine Nine because the best season, and then I and then I just played Skyrim. <laughs> That's my routine. That's my routine now. Watch a show, play Skyrim. That's my routine. <laughs> You're living a good life. I'm living a really good life right now. Now I re-downloaded Elder Scrolls Online, and that's gonna steal my life now because I have I haven't played. At least Skyrim I've played before. <laughs> I downloaded uh, Final Fantasy XIV. That's gonna steal my time. Also trying to get the platinum and Persona for Golden. But I wish I had a click remote so I could fast forward through that because man, going getting a getting a platinum in one one run in Persona is not fun. Didn't you fail your run? No, I reloaded. I reloaded. Okay. Too. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I lost like a month of progress, but it's fine. Oh, you gotta save, dude. That's why. That's why I, I spent like four hours today. You gotta save. Getting back. Bro. Yeah, I do. Uh, did we? Did we? Did we finish talking about click? Are we still talking about click? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not talking about click. Okay, they're both stupid, but I love it. It's great. I just, I just don't understand why the remote, the, the remotes are designed that way to like cause drama, right? I get look it's 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 designed that way so that like he could learn his lesson because Satan essentially yeah <laughs> I feel I feel like like telling him would have been important important information to know earlier in the movie no but it's like it's <laughs> like it um, it's like making a deal with the devil it's like oh you can control time but there's a consequence you know like you, like you know that uh, I don't want to go back to it but you know that episode of Rick and Morty where uh uh. The devil opens a, a shop. Yes. And he and he's like, Oh, this this uh baseball glove will make you catch every baseball that's thrown at you, but there's a catch and I won't tell you what it is. It's like that. You know oh, I know, but like it's 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 I, I think it creates drama for no reason. It's it's like the, the but and because it comes up so abruptly, like the, the last like half hour of the movie or last like forty five minutes of the movie, it's it's like they wrote the first like the first half to three quarters 
And we're like, oh, wait, nothing's happening. And there's no, like, story. It's just he's just dicking around with his remote. Let's uh, let's do something. Let's make him learn a lesson. Because, like, we were all seeing it. Like, like when we got, like, the, for the beginning of the movie, like, halfway mark, maybe. We all in the room said it. Like, what, what's his lesson? Like, what's he learning? Yeah. He's not, like, at that point, his wife is still, like, on his side. Like, his kids don't hate him. Like, like nothing, there's been nothing bad happening. Yeah, he's, he's skipped over a couple of things he probably shouldn't have. But otherwise, like, he hasn't, like, nothing bad has happened. And then suddenly we're, we're given this, like, oh, shit, we're gonna fast forward through 20 years because you got into an argument with your wife and, oh, you're dying now. You still can't have a coma. Oh, the devil is, is, is trying to kill you because you're a bad guy. You should learn to be a, a better guy. There's this really sad scene with his father. Oh, that's the thing we, could, we haven't really talked about. But, like, what, oh, what yeah, happens is when he, when he fast forwards... His body, like, still lives lives through what's going on. If, if for all you anime fans out there, all you anime enjoyers who've, who've seen or read JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, it's literally just King Crimson. This remote is King Crimson. Yeah, when he, when he, uh, when he fast forwards, his body, like, just goes on, like, autopilot, and he just does things instinctively until the fast forward's done. Yeah, so, like, there's a scene with his father... Right before his father dies, basically, where he just because his body's an autopilot, he's a huge asshole to this this kind old man who just wants to make his son happy. And it's probably the best scene in the movie. Like 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 seeing like Adam Sandler watch his autopilot self, like that version of the scene is really good. Yeah, like, it, it is. I, I wish more of the movie was like that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's um, it's pretty sad seeing it because it's like. I think his 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 mother's still alive, right? The, and his yeah, mo- yeah, his yeah. mother is Marge. That's it. <laughs> yeah, in the end of the movie, his mother is still alive. His father is dead. Yeah, because he, he fast forwards and he finds out that his father's dead. So then mm-hmm. he 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 goes in like the memory th- thingy on the uh, on the remote, so he could watch it happen. Like what watch the last time he saw his dad, because the the remote also only shows things that his body saw when he was fast forwarding so he can't just go anywhere during like yeah, yeah. like he, he has to, he has to have experienced it for him to right. go back to it but he can't change it he could just watch yeah it's like you're watching like you're in the menus and you're rewinding to watch a movie right yeah like you're watching a recording and like it's a really like like good scene where he's like yelling at his his autopilot self but obviously he can't influence the past right and and that's where he like learns the lesson. Like I I should have appreciated what I had more instead of focusing so much on advancing my career and, and doing X or Y thing. I should have been appreciated for what I have because like, he loses his wife in the end. Like his wife still like loves him in the end. I think like in the like alternate future where he's an asshole and he's dying. I think his wife still like loves him. Well, she she remarries, but she me she she moves on with her life without him because he's an asshole, right? Yeah. But she still like cares about him, and uh, I-, I think like seeing more scenes like that, like there's the scene when he he wakes up the first time after the first like big time jump and he's fat. Um, he goes to like his wife's house and that's where he learns he's remarried and they have this this really big argument, um, which makes him skip another twenty years because <laughs> that's what he did before, right? Yeah, I I think the movie needed more scenes like that and and scenes like with his with his dad to like tie that emotional part home instead of making poop poop jokes. <laughs> literal but it's jokes. adam sandler movies so we're getting poop jokes yeah yeah I, I agree with that you you need you need to have that that emotional part because like if you don't if we because we didn't get any of those emotional parts and when you don't get those emotional parts why why should the viewer care that that's that's the whole thing right what when, when you're watching a movie and like you 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 feel like you shouldn't care it doesn't have good characterization. Yeah. And it's it's so important for movies to have good characterization and then have the actors show it in in a in a creative way. Cause if you don't, then like you don't have that that feeling in your gut that's like, oh, this person might actually exist and not in this movie and be fake, you know? You don't feel that in this movie, because every character is just one note. Until the last 30 minutes, which is so weird. Yeah. Because, like, obviously, like, it's a wacky concept that isn't impossible to, like, relate to, right? But I think the character 
is relatable. And, and and those are the best kind of characters to watch in movies or in games when you when you can put yourself in their shoes and kind of experience things from your own perspective. I think that's important when you're watching a movie. And I think um, the main character here, Adam Sandler's character, is very relatable. There are people like this out there, right? And those people probably experience a similar situation with like their father, and then they realize, oh, I was an asshole, and I'll never, I'll never see my father again, right? Or my kid, my kids left, and I'll never see them again. And they had like a similar sort of epiphany, but it's like it's wrapped in this mystical twist with this remote, and it, like there, there's a good. There's a film in behind Click, right? There's like there's a an interesting idea there, but it's in an, it's in an Adam Sandler comedy, so it, it's held back by a lot of things that hold back a little out of other Adam Sandler comedies, and it's a shame because I think one Adam Sandler comedies can be funny when he wants to be and he just doesn't, and two there's a good movie behind this one if Adam Sandler if it wasn't an Adam Sandler comedy. So you're just kind of you're kind of stuck with this unfortunate like mess of a film. I think it's fun. I think it's definitely worth like your time if you want to just watch a, a dumb movie to have fun and just kind of sit back and enjoy it. There's definitely worse movies you could watch, but it's just it's kind of unfortunate because you can see what they were trying to do here, and you could see that they missed the mark. It's a real real shame. But uh, the movie did make me laugh. Uh, it made me laugh a, a handful of times. I can't remember when it made me laugh. Um, it's not like laugh out loud funny, but I, I did like I, I chuckled. I, I know like like the beyond joke for Bed Bath and Beyond made me laugh. Uh, that's the only one I yeah, remember that, that, made, that, me that made me that made me laugh. I laughed at the like it's a stupid joke, but I laughed like when he tries to throw away the remote the first time and she keeps like appearing. I think that's like funny because I'm a child. I, the, I I knew that joke. There's a joke in Family Guy that copies the Bed Bath and Beyond joke. I was like, I knew that joke had to come from somewhere. I forgot it was Click. Because I have seen this movie before, but I was a kid and I didn't don't remember it. Because uh, there's a joke in Family Guy where he goes to Beyond in Bed Bath and Beyond, and he f basically flies through the Twilight Zone, and then he gets to a section. And he's like, "Oh, here's the scented candles." I think it was. He was like, "Oh, here are here they are." This is a stupid joke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a stupid movie. It's a really stupid movie. I hate it. I I think it's bad. I think it's really bad. I think it's bad, but I don't hate it. I enjoy it. I wouldn't watch it again. Uh, I don't know if I'd watch it again. I wouldn't watch it again anytime soon. I'd watch. I think I'd. I'd rather watch Pixels. I think. Oh no, I would not watch it. Uh, fuck Pixels. Like I, I also hate Pix. I oh my god, you have it at half a star. <laughs> I hate that movie. I have it at one star. Uh, I, I just, I just rather watch Pixels because it's actually based on a really interesting, real life story. Uh, about a about a guy who uh, who cheated uh, in a in a 1980s video game tournament and basically like there was a whole court case about it. It was it was crazy what actually happened. And this this movie is a quote unquote adaptation of that story, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I remember when Pat when Pac Man came to California and killed everybody. Oh yeah, that that part of the movie is, is stupid. that's real, right? That's real. But I like it, like the video game references in that movie are kind of funny. I mean, isn't it cool I, when the no when... I don't I don't agree. I think I think they're about as funny or interesting as as the, the references in Ready Player One. Don't you? But you don't like that the main villain is uh, the L piece in Tetris. <laughs> Fuck that movie. <laughs> that's a movie I never want to watch again. <laughs> and that's saying something is right before we recorded. I said I would rewatch Jack and Jill. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so th there you go. That's 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 click. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> that's, that's that's fine. <laughs> click, click is done. All right. So keeping up the trend of things that are stupid and dumb and and really really dumb and really really stupid. We're we're gonna talk a little bit about. Uh, well, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, She Hulk because that's what Marvel is doing right now. I guess there's two shows right now that we're quote unquote watching. I say quote unquote because I watched episode one of She Hulk. And I'm probably not going to watch it any more of it until it ends. I'll just binge it when it's done. Yeah. Because uh, I don't care enough, if I'm being perfectly honest. And then um, both of us are watching um, Cyberpunk uh, Edge Runners. Yeah. I don't know if you finished it, but I did. No, I haven't finished it yet. I only saw the, the first episode. Oh, yeah. It's, but it's uh, kind of... So, starting with She-Hulk, uh, it's really not good. <laughs> it's, I, it's charming in a way. 
because there are some jokes that are kind of funny. I still think episode three is the best. We're going to talk about the whole show at once here because, you know, Pat still hasn't watched most of it, but I I guess you don't care about spoilers. I don't care about spoilers. But uh, the third episode, I think, is still the best one because you got the court case and Emil Blonsky comes back and he's actually kind of interesting now. I really, he's going to be in Thunderbolts, so let's hope he's okay. Uh, we got the, um, the, not the cast, but the, the, the team for Thunderbolts. It doesn't look very promising. I'll be honest with you. I'm not, I'm, my excitement r- went way down. I just need to see a trailer. I need to see a trailer. I just love how they changed Kamala Khan's powers because it would be too similar to a, a Mr. Fantastic. But then half the Thunderbolts team are just super soldiers. Yeah, there's three super soldiers in the Thunderbol- Thunderbolts team. The newest episode for She-Hulk is okay, I guess. There's like a really stupid thing about an influencer named Titania. It's dumb. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. I hate it. There was a tease at the end of that episode about a a certain horned guy who... <laughs> I mean, Daredevil was in the the trailers. Yeah. So next episode is is when they're introducing him. Um, hopefully, I would imagine anyway. With that, with that, because I I haven't seen the episode, but Lib showed me the cliffhanger. That's the only so, mention you know, of him in the whole episode. So uh, I'd imagine that next week will be his introduction, and then he'll he'll do Daredevil things. Yeah, we got a bunch of news for Daredevil: Born Again at uh, D twenty three and at. Uh, Something else I forgot what it was called, but the the, the main the main thing is that uh, they confirmed that it's a soft reboot. They're filming it soon, right? It, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's I think I think they said they were filming it either in November or next January, something like that. I can't remember exactly what they said, but they confirmed eighteen episodes, soft reboot, filming soon. Uh, Hopefully it gets released when it's supposed to be released because like we talked about in our uh, San Diego Comic-Con episode, I'm not buying it. <laughs> I don't think, I think it's getting delayed. Like everything on that list is getting delayed. Yeah, it's, it's the late season. A lot of stuff is getting delayed right now. Yeah. But uh, all in all, She-Hulk so far, we've got, we're five episodes in. There's supposed to be nine episodes. So, so far, not good. Not good at all. Not funny. Not good. Uh, and then for uh, Cyberpunk, I've only seen the first episode. You finished it, so I guess you can talk about it. But the first episode was really good. Yeah, I think it's really good. I think if uh, even if you haven't played the game, I think uh, I think if you like that Cyberpunk aesthetic, I think this is a, a fun watch. Um, Studio Trigger animated it. Studio Trigger is amazing. A lot of the animation pops here. I think it, they, they do a good job with the setting. Um, yeah, it's fun. I, I like it. I like it quite a bit. I don't really know how I feel about it, how it ended, but it it doesn't exactly tie into the game, so I get it. But we'll see. The the music is uh, is really good, and it it's very reminiscent of uh, of Blade Runner. I really like yeah. the soundtrack. This is basically a Blade Runner anime. Yeah, basically uh, the second Blade Runner because there was a Black Lotus, which sucked. Black Lotus was so bad. <laughs> It's like Cyberpunk the game has like a Blade Runner inspiration in it, but like it's, oh, yeah, it's for not sure. it's not a Blade Runner story, right? Um this one kind of feels more like a Blade Runner story. That's good. I, I would recommend it. It's not long, it's like ten episodes. Um if you have Netflix, uh, go watch it. So uh moving on to our final segment here, Backlogged, the uh segment where we recommend each other movies to talk about in the next episode. And last time Pat recommended Elvis to me and I'll 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 admit here, okay guys, I watched it, but I didn't I didn't finish it. I couldn't finish it. This movie broke me. This this movie emotionally and physically broke me. How many stars did you give it, Pat? <laughs> I gave it three stars, I think. Three stars? Okay. I did not give it a rating because that would be unfair because I didn't finish the movie. Uh, but up until the point where I stopped, which was about an hour in, I think I, 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 I wrote down the exact point where I stopped watching. It was uh, one hour, one minute and 25 seconds in. I stopped watching it. I, 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 I couldn't continue. I just couldn't. And the reason why is just is the editing and the music. 
Okay, so first of all, let's start with the music because it's easier to talk about. There's so many scenes where they could have just played Elvis music or played music of the times because this movie takes place in the 60s, the mid 60s, early 60s, you know? Why didn't they use music from the 60s? Why did they why did they use uh, rap music from this year? I mean they 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 play I mean, they, don't, they don't play all the songs but they do a lot of covers of Elvis songs. Yeah, they do a lot of covers of Elvis songs because th this move first of all biopic of Elvis wow what a surprise uh for some reason they decided to edit it like a fucking trailer, like what Pat told yeah, me. Yeah, I, I think, I think, yeah. When I when I pitched this movie to, to not when I pitched it, when I when I watched it, because I watched it before I recommended it to him, I told him like the editing is is like you're gonna hate it. <laughs> like this trap, you're gonna hate it. And the only reason I recommended it to him is because it was the first movie on his watch list when I opened up his page. I'm like, I watched this recently. He hasn't seen it. Whatever, I recommend it. But I knew he was gonna hate the editing. This this has to be one of the worst edited movies I think I've ever seen in my life. I've seen worse edited movies. Like, I've seen worse editing, but this entire movie is edited like a trailer. And not in the, not in a good way. It's in, in, it's in an annoying way. It's not, it's not, it's not an easy watch, not a fun watch. I can't even describe how it's edited because it, 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 it contains a lot of different visuals. So you have to, like, watch it for yourself. If you watch the first, like, ten minutes, that's basically how the whole movie is edited. There is no moments where there's no music in the background. There's always music in the background. Always. The, even in emotional moments. Like, when there's a point where Elvis, like, fights with his mother. And they talk, like, because he's mad about how much she's drinking. And there's music in the back. Why is there music during that scene? We're supposed to, like, be in the moment, aren't we? We're supposed to feel bad for both characters, aren't we? No, but in the background, you got, like, do wop do wop boo ba da It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's a biopic about Elvis, Lim. It's a music guy. He's a musician. And, like... Everyone's saying this movie is racist. Uh, Adoy, it's about Elvis. Uh, if you don't know Elvis's backstory and his background and how he made his music, and you're complaining about the, how this movie's racist, I guess you're just not, like, you just don't know a lot about Elvis. Yeah, I, I think, I wish they handled certain topics with a little more tact. Yes. Especially considering that, like, this movie, it came out in 2022, it came out after after a lot of the stuff that happened in 2020 that we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about, but you 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 know you know right. Like just to to put it in the simplest terms possible, Elvis basic like the real Elvis like what he did for his music, most of his music he didn't write. Other people wrote. At the time when at these times when when these when when he was popular when he would start putting out his records. People didn't listen to that type of songs because it was written and sang by black people. Elvis was like, I'll, I'll take that because he was uh, raised uh, in a black neighborhood. So he was like, I'll take that and I'll remake the songs so that white people can listen to it. And th that, that's how it was in the late 50s, early 60s. That's just how America was. And we're not uh, like I'm beating around the bush because we're on YouTube and 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 Spotify. We don't want to get demonetized or anything like that. Th this movie touches upon those topics, and you have to because you're telling the story of Elvis Presley. That's how he made his music. Yeah, but I I don't think they they handle the topic particularly well. There there's a there's a moment in the trailer where they they reference um Martin Luther King, right? Yeah. And because that was like a huge moment for Elvis um, in his career at the time, right? And they don't really like. They, I, I feel like this movie wanted to say something, but they know that saying it would not have been true to Elvis because of just how the world was at the time. But they and that they kind of like tiptoe around the issue instead of actually addressing it. And I feel like they should have addressed it properly. Yeah, and this movie really drags. It's like two hours and forty minutes. You had time. Yeah, it is. It is too long. It is way too long. And they, they had the time to, to to handle these topics better, for sure. You had time 
to to do this to properly tell Elvis's story and to properly tell the stories of of the the black Americans that wrote these songs that were very influential to Elvis's success. They had all of that time to properly tell the real story. But instead of doing that, they beat around the bush. They they tried being more like PG, quote unquote, and just focused on Elvis's uh Tom Hanks, El- Elvis's uh, manager. Yeah, that was like I like I don't know how much like, how much influence the manager actually had or how big the manager actually was. It, it was a lot. Like his manager basically owned him. But like if a lot of the time it feels like it's a movie about him, not about Elvis. Like Elvis is a side character to it. And to be to be honest, Tom Hanks is really good in this movie. His acting is top notch as always. The prosthetics look really good. I think the performances in general in this movie are really good. I think the performances and I think the um the the covers are, are pretty good here of, of the Elvis songs. Yeah. So uh, Austin Butler plays uh, the titular role, and he is fantastic. Like it, it, he actually uh, famously got stuck in the role I, I, after filming was done. He kept speaking in the Elvis voice because he the 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 movie took so long to film because of COVID. He he got stuck as the Elvis character, and it took a, a a long time before he was able to readjust and speak normally again, which is really cool. It's really interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. How how like actors can get so intertwined with their role that that they end up acting outside of acting. You gotta get into the head of the, you have to get into the head of the character, right? Yeah, I think that that happened to uh, that happened to um, Heath Ledger. Yeah, that happened to Heath Ledger, uh, and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio it happened to Leonardo DiCaprio when he was doing uh, Django Unchained. When he was doing Chang- Django Unchained, that happened to him. So it was like, yeah, this this gets crazy how that just happens. You got to be a really good actor for that to happen to you, I guess. Or crazy, or crazy, yeah. <laughs> I I don't I've ne I haven't seen any Austin Butler movies before this. Oh, well, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I guess he's and he he's gonna be in Dune too. I have no idea who he'd be playing, but I'm assuming he's he's gonna have a lot of a, he's gonna be very different in Dune, of course, <laughs> because you know Dune sci-fi book Dune. <laughs> oh, he's in The Dead Don't Die. That's been in my watch list like forever. <laughs> I need to watch that movie. Have you seen it? I have not. It's it's a it's a movie with like with with Bill Murray and Adam Driver, and they're like police officers during a zombie apocalypse. Apparently, it's really funny. Okay, I'll take that out. Sure. The last thing I want to say about Elvis on the topic of uh, of r- proper representation is um, this is an Elvis biopic, right? So obviously, they're gonna paint Elvis in a, a different light than they will some of the other characters in the movie, right? Or like at least they'll they'll put a little more. Of a positive shine on him because like he's Elvis, we all know who he is, right? I think this movie does a little too much to kind of absolve Elvis of guilt or blame. <laughs> like I'm not gonna sit here and say Elvis was a bad dude because I what, what the <laughs> fuck do I know, right? But like Elvis was responsible for a lot of the things that happened then, and the movie kind of either brushes it off or like blames someone else. Like they, they put more blame on his manager or on other people. I think Elvis kind of needed to be painted more negatively in this movie. He's he's kind of treated like a saint here, and uh, that's not exactly accurate to history. If you want to look into that yourself, um, there's tons of history on Elvis and his career out there. But like, I had to just stop watching it just because the way it's edited, and the way it's shot, and the way the movie is paced, it just made me so bored. I was yawning the whole time. I was barely staying awake and I, I I just I had to stop. I just I just I couldn't continue. And I want to see how it could I'll probably go back to it later. That's why I wrote down exactly where I stopped. But I just I couldn't fucking watch it. It's like it's one of the most boring and slowest movies I've ever seen. And I've been saying that a lot because movies are really long nowadays for some reason. It's definitely like like too long. It, it could have been like, and that that's why I stopped. Oh, like I, I really wanted to continue watching it because I love Elvis, love his music. I just couldn't 
watch it, man. <laughs> I, I'm sure if I was watching it with somebody else, I I probably would have seen the whole thing. If I, if I was able to make commentary with somebody while watching it, it would have been way better. If it was just a lot shorter. <laughs> like, uh, when Pat recommended it to me, right away I was like, ooh, cool, I, I want to watch it. I've been meaning to watch it. And I saw the length. I was like, ooh, that's a lot. That's long. That's long. I know it's a biopic, but that's long. And I've been and I've been putting off watching it for so long. And I finally was like, okay, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it. Two days ago, I was like, I'm gonna do it. Or yesterday or something. Yeah, yesterday I was like, I'm I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna watch it. It's it was so bad. It was so bad. I like it, it, when I finish watching it, I'll probably give it. Uh, I'll give it either one and a half stars or two stars. That's where I'm at right now. Maybe the ending is good. Maybe the second half of the movie is better than the first half. I don't know. I'll have to find out later. <laughs> but funny thing. Looking at the poster right now. The V in Elvis is placed so perfectly on his dick. <laughs> like, I'll put a picture of it. It's gotta be intentional. <laughs> it probably is. It probably is. <laughs> it's placed so perfectly on there. But yeah, that was Elvis. Sorry I didn't watch the whole thing, but... <laughs> There you go. But Pat, I need to recommend you a movie now. You do. Okay. So, this is going to be a weird one. Okay? No, okay. There's a lot of movies on my watch list now. I added a lot of stuff there. So you can... I don't think this movie is on your watch list. Okay. Let me check. I'm checking. Hold on. It is not. Okay, yeah, it's not. So, I, I want to recommend you a movie... That we, we've mentioned in passing, especially in the Rogue One episode. So I'm, recomm I'm, I'm recommending you... Uh, you're going to hate this. I'm, I'm recommending you Solo, a Star Wars story. I want you to watch it. If, <laughs> I can watch it with you if you, if, if you, if you want. If, if you think it's going to be me with Elvis, you're not, you're going to end. You're not going to finish it. <laughs> no, I'll finish it. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll watch it with you to start watch it with somebody but yeah we'll see i'll I'll watch it fine look i i don't think it's as bad as a lot of people say i think it's i think it's like pretty good like in all like putting all of the star wars stories if you rank them like i guess this could be the worst one but i'm also counting like mandalorian uh obi-wan kenobi like all, all the like shows that should have been branded a star wars story you want to talk, hear us talk about that check out our uh rogue one episode but solo is, is 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 weird it's like the black sheep of the entire star wars franchise for some reason you either really 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 hate it or you think it's fine nobody loves it <laughs> nobody loves it it's either it's okay or it's bad so I, I want I want you to watch it because it's also the only Star Wars the only Star Wars movie you've never seen. So there you go. And I promise this is a this is a fresh off the real promise here. This is the last Star Wars movie we will ever cover. I don't ever. think that's gonna, I don't think that's gonna be true. I, something, something tells me that's not gonna be true. This is the last Star Wars movie we will ever cover. This is a fresh like, off the I real feel, promise. I feel like we're going to talk about Ahsoka. I don't know what it is, but I feel like Ahsoka is going to break us. Why? Because is it going to be so bad or so good? <laughs> no, I think it's going to be an excuse to talk about Clone Wars. And then that's what we're just going to use it as an excuse. <laughs> I mean, we, we will talk about like Andor in, and, and Ahsoka in the, in like when we talk about our, the TV shows. No, I feel like we're going to dedicate an episode to Ahsoka. I don't know what it is. I just, I just, I feel it coming. I, I know we said that for like Obi Wan and 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 Mandalorian and shit. I don't know what it is, but I feel like we're gonna we're gonna have a lot to say about Ahsoka. We'll see when it happens. I also feel like we when we whenever we inevitably inevitably get another Star Wars movie, a new trilogy or otherwise, we might talk about it. But we'll see. I don't know. I, I feel like that, I feel like that problem is being broken. Oh God! <laughs> I just gotta, okay. Whatever. For a long time, it'll be the last Star Wars movie. <laughs> Uh, but with that, uh, we're going to end the episode here. Thank you so much to uh, Natasha Kikioke for recommending us Click. If you have a recommendation and you want to send it to us, make sure to go to our link tree, linktr.ee slash fresh off the reel and click the first link you see 
so you can recommend us a film or TV show that we can cover on this podcast. Uh, make sure to tune in next week because next episode will be finally, finally continuing the Cornetto trilogy and talking about Hot Fuzz. Yeah. Did <laughs> you cut? You cut out. Yeah. <laughs> you cut out. It was so funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. I, I uh, Hot Fuzz is great. I love Hot Fuzz. I can I'll. I'm finally gonna watch it. Hey, you're watching it for the first time. Yeah. We can watch it together. I want to rewatch it. Yeah, we uh, of course we're gonna watch it together. Man, yeah, Hot Fuzz. We're finally gonna continue the Cornetto trilogy, the thing we started in episode six. <laughs> now it's what thirty <laughs> seven. <laughs> yeah, we're th- this is episode thirty seven. Yeah, it's been it's been a it's been a minute. It's been Let, thirty episodes. Let's check Anchor. Let's check Anchor real quick. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, episode. Ooh, I was wrong. It's episode four. Episode four. We did Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> uh, don't go nice. check out that episode, cause it's not good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, we're finally continuing that. Yay. So make sure you tune in next week so you don't miss it. How do you not miss it? Well, you follow us on Spotify or subscribe to us on YouTube so you can never miss an episode. And you can find those also on our link tree. What else is on the link tree? Oh, I'll tell you. You also got the, so- the socials, our Instagram, our Twitter, where we post updates and shit like that. And of course, you can check out our letterbox accounts where you can see our reviews, our lists that we made and... See some podcast spoilers, maybe, because, you know, Letterboxd, you update it, like, every fucking day. So, yeah, we watched Borat recently. We rewatched Borat with a bunch of friends. That was fun. That was cool. Yeah. I might be I might be watching a movie or two today. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but that's it for now. So we will see all of you in a theater near you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is a test of sound. I'm drinking a cappuccino. Wow. Do you have like a fucking machine or do you just do it? No, I I went to the, I bought these like instant cappuccino uh, packets. Oh. I meant, I meant to buy iced coffee, but I, well, iced cappuccinos, but I grabbed regular cappuccino. Does so it, just does put, it matter? What, what's the difference in the powder even? Probably not. Like I could have, I guess I could have used cold water for this, but... <laughs> Whatever, it's fine. I'm drinking this right now. I do have, I do have, a, I have a Ben Keurig has a cappuccino, like, option that you could also froth milk in. So I could have done that too, I guess. But I didn't. Yeah. We, ju- we just got done watching a bunch of uh, life hacks. Yeah, I'm dead inside. You know, it, it's, it's great. They're, do you, do you guys, like, here, it's, it's topical because we're a movie podcast. They talk about uh, how to sneak food into a movie theater. So just make sure, for, make sure uh, if you want to sneak food into a movie theater, to just tape chocolate bars to your stomach so it looks like you have a six-pack. So that when the movie security guard looks at, <laughs> does a, a fuck, pats you down to make sure you're not bringing any illegal substances into the movie theater because that's what happens apparently make sure uh, he sees your six pack and be like oh yeah i'm strong yeah then you can ask him to touch the chocolate like if you're touching your abs like oh you want to feel my abs bro <laughs> and he's like well they're rock hard uh-huh. <laughs> I, I i genuinely like like i lost i lost what little will i had to live left so i lost watching those videos <laughs> okay let me listen to this Sound test. I should blow my nose. Actually, my fa- I all of a yeah, sudden. Yeah, I should do that too. I should do that too. Oh, this is great for the recording. Oh yeah, this is gross. Mmm. Hey Spotify, listen to this. <laughs> oh yeah, you love that shit, don't you? Mmm mmm mmm. Yeah, you. They love something, all right. Mmm. Yeah, there's there's podcasts that's just just fucking. That's the whole podcast. It's just people doing that. (laughs) Okay. Let us begin.